digital innovations made in Germany. That's the motto of the Focus Digital Star Award. Stunning and significant ideas in software, mobility, e-commerce, energy, and social networks were developed in our country. Join us and discover the most exciting innovations and inventions of the digital world with a sign of quality made in Germany. Here are the nominees for 2014. Please welcome the Digital Stars. The Focus Digital Star Award is about to be presented. <laughs> Please, Jörg Kroos, Editor-in-Chief of Focus Magazine, come on stage. Thank you, Steffi Czerny, for this warm welcome, and thank you for that great DLD we enjoy since Sunday. Um, and very well, warm, warm welcome to the Focus Digital Star Award, the award for innovation and technology. And why are we doing this at the Focus magazine? And uh, I can tell you, since Focus in, uh, started in 1993, uh, always figured out what's upcoming, the upcoming business, upcoming technologies, the people behind the technologies, and the Focus magazine did, is, did it always in a way, in an optimistic way, and not in a, in a mood of alert, and especially when it came to technologies. And um, we want to help you and your ideas with this prize, because we want to present your ideas to our readership and with this prize. And we have the real, the, the, the right staff to do this. And so um, please give a warm welcome to my colleague to the, our tech columnist and startup columnist, Britta Wedeling. Britta, please come on stage. Yeah, thanks a lot. So, um, you know, when I recently uh, was in Silicon Valley, I met really interesting people and saw amazing companies, you know, such as Google, Facebook, Twitter and Foursquare. And when you are asking these guys, you know, this seems to be kind of California only show. Where are the other landscapes, whereas Germany, they're always telling you, okay, you know, we got this special ecosystem, we got risk-taking investors, we got hard-working founders, and that's our secret. But as you will see today, uh, Germany is going to catch up. And we saw all these great German ideas, and we had a board of uh, high-level experts from economies and science, and we had really uh, a tough job to do to choose the right awards among all these great ideas, among all these great nominees. And uh, thanks a lot to Holger Schmidt, who gave us a great support in that uh, jury. So we had really hours and hours to sit around and to take care that we will choose, in the end, the right awards. So, Britta, let's talk about our first winner. From his early days, Hasso Plattner from SAP believe that companies need to look by focusing on their customers, on the need on their customers. And today SAP is a global player, a global player, but still powerful enough to reinvent itself. Yeah, you know, if you see SAP HANA, for example, Hasso Platten and the student developed at the University of Potsdam, it's a memory database where you can information, uh, you can analyze information in real time. I think this is an amazing job. Yeah, so let's see the spot. Yeah, I think so. If it's, I think it's working. Okay. SAP HANA converges database and application platform capabilities in memory to transform transactions, analytics, text analysis, predictive and spatial processing so businesses can operate in real time. So please welcome 
Uh, our first winner of the Digital Star Award for B2B, Stefan Sick from SAP HANA. Hey, great to have you here. Congratulations. So, Here's the prize. My this is your prize. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much. This is for the team. Thank you. Okay, maybe if I sit there. So, too. So, you know, in uh, the digital world, you got one rule. You have to keep it simple. But if you have to explain your business model, you know, and you have to explain it, and you have to explain it, and you have to explain it, you lose. And the idea, the idea of you pick it is so easy. It's so easy to understand. It's a website to compare prices, not uh, worldwide prices, just to compare prices of items you, you, need, uh, you, da you daily need in your neighborhood. And uh, it helps you to save money. And this is the, the disrupting thing of you pick it. It helps your wallet. So um, this is really disruptive. And uh, let's face the spot for the yeah. next winner. Yeah. You Pick It is a free web application for local price comparisons that helps reduce shopping costs either via app, mobile device, or internet. Never pay too much again. You Pick It shows you what, where, when. The winner of our award for perspective, the founder of You Pick It, Richard Künkele. Congratulations. Congratulations. Coming to you. So, great to have you. Digital star for the perspective. Wow. With the innovation of the year, the award, um, the jury is honoring the most Disruptive technology. It's our most important prize. And I'd like to invite a very special expert in digital business to honor our winner. Please welcome our jury member, Claudia Nemat, member of the board of the management of the Deutsche Telekom. Welcome. Hello. So, microphone. It's fine. So, hello. Hello. Why is the innovation of our first winner, so important. What do you think? So, actually, Germany has a long tradition of great science and great scientists. And being a physicist myself, I have to say I am very happy about the award winner. That man has created a very disruptive approach. He has actually invented a completely new platform for scientists, which allows scientists to share their ideas around the world. I believe it's going to revolutionize collaboration among scientists and hopefully then innovation for mankind. So, who is the winner? Spot on. A lot of the things great discoveries are made of are already out there. They just need to be pieced together, like in a puzzle. On ResearchGate, scientists share their knowledge with their peers. Whether it's a data set, results from failed experiments, or a paper they've published, here they can find what they need to make great discoveries happen. This is where knowledge unites. This is ResearchGate. So. Congratulations to ResearchGate and the founder, Ihat Madish. Hi, congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, please have a seat. We start some questions and my first question of course goes to Ihan Madish the winner of our most important prize from research gauge and Ihan you studied medicine and uh, computer science in Harvard and uh, 
you uh, could have been a doctor and uh, make your job, but you took the risky way. What was yeah. the challenge? Why did you do that? Um, I was always um, thinking big. I wanted to change something fundamental. When I was a young boy, I wanted to win the Nobel Prize. Um, and um, this is why when I was doing research, I noticed, okay, if I change the system how science works, I may win the Nobel Prize. Um, oh. And I have a bigger impact on science than I would just stay in my research. So this is why I decided to build something which fundamentally changing how do we do science. Do you have a concrete timetable for that Nobel Prize? Um, you should call Sweden somewhere there or Norway. Oh, we Depends will do. on where. Yeah, we will do, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's uh, before I die, yeah. Has to, be, has to be kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. Should be better. Oh, at the end, honestly, it's more important that we connect the scientists in the world and, and help the next Nobel Prize winners to share their results in a much more efficient way. And this is maybe the more important thing. Better. So, uh, I heard the story when you first met your later investor, Bill Gates. You brought, of all possible things, um, um, just an Apple laptop, you know, his biggest concurrent. So, how did you convince him as well to give you all this amount of money? Yeah, this is um, a funny story. I really noticed it in the moment where I opened up my bag. Um, <laughs> yeah, cool. He was sitting next to me and, of course, uh, two weeks before Angela Merkel visited our office. So I had, you know, you, you learn how to talk to these people and then Bill Gates sitting there and then I opening my back, taking my Mac out, I said, oh shit. And if you compare Angela Merkel to Bill Gates, what would you say? He didn't say anything. One thing he said was, it was very funny, I showed him some numbers. He's extremely smart. He can combine slides where sometimes I think, what the hell, how he did do this? And there was this one situation where this one graph was in front of his face and he started touching my screen. And I said, ah. And he looked at me, it's just a Mac. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I see, okay. Idjet, you work with investors from Silicon Valley, but your home base of your company is Berlin. So uh, what advantage is, uh, offers the German and capital to your business? Could you describe that? Yeah, um, the biggest advantage is to have people who haven't had their big success yet, combined with the creativity of, art, of the art and music scene in Berlin. Um, we have already an ecosystem in Berlin, which was built up from, from other startups, um, and now this big success, they haven't had it yet. And these are all the people who are doing every day this fantastic work in our offices, and they want to have this one big success. And this is something with ResearchGate, you know, we're working on something world-changing, is a very strong motivator for that, what they're doing. Okay, what's a better place for, invest, for startups? Berlin or Silicon Valley? No, it's still Silicon Valley, I would say. Okay. It's still Silicon Valley, and we have to be realistic. Um, but I think, and this is, we don't, we have to be patient. Um, we have to be patient because if you look at the Silicon Valley, how this evolved, you know, you had PayPal, it was successful. Then all the founders of PayPal started investing in new companies, built up their new companies. We need one or two big successes in Berlin, and then the founders and people who work there will start a new wave of startups and will help. And we as founders are in responsibility to help the next startups to build okay. something more successful. And I think we just need some more time. I'm any, sure you will any bring plans Berlin about forward. leaving Berlin, yeah. by the way? Sorry, what? Any, any plans about leaving Berlin? No, no, definitely not, no. So no plans to leave Berlin. So I'm sure your company will bring Berlin forward. Thank you very much. I hope so. <laughs> so, uh, Richard, your website, you pick it, offers a, a treasure of data. Is it correct that uh, you browse through more than 60 million items a day? So uh, my, my question to that is, uh, on that is, how can you manage that they really find the, the best price in the hood? Well, good question. Uh, first of all, I have to correct you a little bit. Uh, it's not 60 million items, it's 60 million prices, which prices. are tracked in, uh, within your picket. Well, the idea I had was, uh, f it was uh, 10, 10 to 12 years ago, because uh, actually um, your picket, or my, um, my, my, as my, uh, me as a person, I, I come from the B2B business. So we were tracking market research data for the last 50 years concerning pricing, concerning consumer behavior, and so on. And when I looked at it, 10 years ago, I said, maybe the internet is getting ready to give the consumers more information, more transparency about it. And uh, that, was, that was the birth of your picket, actually. I didn't have any name. I had the data. I had the resources for it. I didn't need an investor. So 
I said, I'm, I will go for it. But it was very difficult at the beginning because, you know, um, I had to wait till the smartphones are ready for it, till the consumers are ready for it. And uh, you, have to, you have to try to get all this big data into a consumer product, which is very, very difficult. And the 60 million prices we have in it, they are actually, uh, they are renewed every three hours. Every three hours of a day, we are putting new data in the system. So you can really, in every village, in every, in every town in Germany, you can scan your fridge or your bathroom or whatever, say, this 10 items I want to buy, and uh, I don't have any time, I just want to go in one shop, which is nearby, tell me which one to save the most. This was the idea behind it, and of course, uh, it is very difficult to get this in, in real okay. time, all the data. This makes much, uh, life much easier. Of course. Exactly. Yes. So, so uh, what about money? Uh, what's your business plan? Do you have any ideas about raising money from investors or something? Oh, well, uh, first of all, um, I'm, in a, I'm in a pretty comfortable position because um, I, I, go with, uh, I, I go for, you pick it, uh, only uh, concerning advertisements at the moment. So, the big... The big companies, like the big uh, manufacturers of consumer goods, or fast-moving consumer goods, the retailers, and so on, they are going to, they are advertising already, but they are going to advertise even more because they want to get to their target group. So if somebody is going to a, to a, a cosmetic shop or he's going to a, 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 a superstore or whatever and wants to buy something, of course, there are many things which are interesting about the, about the shop about additional uh, offers and so on. And this is with, uh, what we can put in your picket and which, which tracks the target group. It reaches the target group. So whatever you are, you are, you are, you are searching in your picket, a shampoo, uh, uh, perfume or whatever, you get information about the perfume or about uh, 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 another product which uh, belongs in this field. Okay. So how much Let's money do you make per month? Well, my per uh, uh, I personally or the company? Personally, both? The company? Yeah, the company uh, yes, would you be like. interesting, me, it, you know, but we also can talk about your of course, salary. It's, it's very I don't know familiar. if you want you to talk about it. it. Be believe me, it's, uh, <laughs> it's enough that I can survive and uh, I'm in the happy position that I don't have to, uh, that I'm, I, didn't, I didn't invent you pick it for the money. Because so I, what I've, for? I've could so I I've could have sold my company uh, several times already, but okay. I'm, I'm too young. To not, not to work or not to be a creative. So the first thing is, I want to invent something which is unique. Let's have a look into the future. Uh, how we will shop maybe in 10 years? Is it a disrupting it's a very, business? It's a very, very good question because I discussed uh, exactly this questions five to six years ago with the board of many big retailers, international retailers, which are my clients in my B2B business. And five or six years ago, the answer was, don't give this prices, don't give this information to the consumer. We don't want that to, to happen. Because in transparency was, of course, is of course a, a big uh, advantage for those retailers because they can take which prices ever they want to take. So they were against it. But in the last two years, um, The, the approach changed because the web gets more transparent, it gets quicker, there's a lot of information at the consumer. The consumer wants to have this information. So the big retailers and the big manufacturers say, okay, we have to go with the time, we cannot turn the clock back. We cannot go back anymore. We want to participate. And this was, the, this was actually the, 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 the start of your picket, of getting it real, realized, because uh, they, uh, they saw that we can combine online shops with it. We can do virtual shopping. Many, ma a, big, a big part of the population is getting older, is not flexible anymore, cannot use the car anymore, and so on. And if you know the structure of the, of the, uh, of the retailers, of the retail business in Europe or in Germany, you know that, uh, that you know, the online business consuming, uh, and consumer goods is very small. Great. And then the next step, you have to explain to your customers where they can buy the best news magazine, for example, in Berlin. Exactly. Okay. Maybe, yeah. So, um, Mr. Zeke, 
from SAP HANA. You analyze millions of data uh, in real time to enhance medical care, for example. And um, nobody in this room can imagine how you, how you can do it. So could you explain your business, your work with SAP HANA in just four sentences? Four, okay, yeah. Okay, we are, we are just jumping on the incredible advances that we see on the hardware side. So it has been a complete disruption of how computers now can do things. We, we used to put things on our hard disk, and uh, you know the main memory was a scarce resource. This has changed a lot, completely. So we have now main memory as if we had it in, as, as, um, as hard disk, and the scarce memory is now within the chips themselves. So this is the new thing that we program about. And in order to really leverage that, you have to rewrite the code, and that's what we did. Okay. Did everybody understand it? <laughs> great. It's a great job. We're very intelligent audience, <laughs> of course, today. So, um, you know, everything is about, you know, the business model, you know, how you raise money out of your, your product. So do you already have some uh, consumers of your products? Do you have some, someone who's buying your stuff? So first of all, our customers buy our stuff. The, this price is also for, our, for the teams and our customers that uh, believe in HANA, that are HANA fans, that okay. use HANA to get back innovation to the IT teams that has been under high pressure from a cost side. So this is reinventing not only SAP, it's reinventing also the IT you know, community in our customer space. And they do everything from our traditional uh, field of where we are, where we're coming from, logistics, finance. We talked about finance before. <laughs> We're talking about consumer relations, uh, customer relations, we talk about HR, and then we go one step beyond that. We see the potential of HANA in areas where SAP has not played so far, for example, in cancer research. We're doing an incredible um, project at the National Center for Tumor Research in Heidelberg. We're doing things in sports, like soccer. You mm -hmm. saw us mm -hmm. maybe even in television, where we use our geospatial engine that can track the location of players and the ball and everything in real time. And we also do things within uh, where everything, where, where, where there is a sensor, basically. Mm -hmm. Last question. Um, you deal with very sensitive data, of course, especially when you have data from, uh, from the medicine sector. How do you protect privacy? This is a big story right now. It's a, it's a huge uh, topic. And for us, this is more like the homework. That's where we're coming from. So we used to keep the most sensitive and the most you know, important data of big, big companies. Think about uh, personal data, uh, payroll data. So we know that job from a, an application point of view. We know that job from a technology point of view. We can do it. So thank you very much to yeah. our winners. Thank, thank you very you. much for your attention. Thank you for your attention, yeah. Thank you.